everybody who's watching this show wants to all know the same thing is how did you go from zero to a million? How were you able to drive uh, consistent streams? And then obviously when you're doing these things and they're organic and they're real, you're going to drive sales as well because you're building a customer base, you're reaching more people. It's just, you know, it's the whole process. So like kind of, you kind of give us the background of how you started and stuff, but how do you really think stuff started transitioning into actually growing, making sales, building a customer base? Like where do, how did you see that click in and like, what do you think you did and are doing to kind of, you know, continue that? Yeah. So to figure out how I got to where I am now, it has to start from, I would say from 2016 to 2017, right? A lot of like, though a lot of people don't understand YouTube is actually, it's not an entertainment space, you know? For viewers, it's an entertainment space. For content creators, like anyone that uploads beats on YouTube, you got to treat it as a marketing platform, right? And the goal of your marketing platform is to drive traffic to your beat store, right? Like beat stars. So back in 2016, 2017, like I didn't really understand that. I was treating it like an entertainment space, right? So I was uploading beats like whenever I felt like it. And like Angel said, you know, like my thumbnails were, they were all over the place. Like there was no theme, right? And I wasn't focusing on a niche, like, uh, or a demographic of artists, right? I'll, I'll, you see me, I do like a Jacquees beat, like a Bryson Tiller beat. And then all of a sudden I have like a gunna beat in there. Like, it doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? And then like, so there's really no fan base because there's nothing to be a fan about. Like there's no sound, you know? So that was me going 2016, 27, even 2018. But the turning point was when I realized that it's a marketing platform and you have to really treat it like a business. You know, uh, like Timmy said, like like a Chick-fil-A, you know, when you go to Chick-fil-A, it's chicken sandwiches. Like, that's what you go to Chick-fil-A for. You know, you don't go to McDonald's for chicken sandwiches. Right. So that's when I was like, OK, yo, shit, let me make the switch. So I kind of picked one sound that like I really love doing because at the end of the day, it's like if you don't love doing it, it's not going to take you far. Right. Nice. So nice. I chose I chose like that R&B trap song because I just love that music. So I would say around um, mid to late 2018. I started focusing exclusively on building my uh, R&B trap soul sound, right? And then from there, I downloaded this uh, app. It's called VidIQ for YouTube. So anyone viewing, if you guys don't have it, get VidIQ or uh, I think the new one is TuneBuddy as well. Yeah, we have the, we have the TuneBuddy integrated on Beastars. Just a shame oh yeah, love. just yeah, throw it out there. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So either or is perfect, right? Either or. Um, I'm pretty sure on both of them, uh, there's this thing called keywords, and you can see the competition and ranking of certain keywords. So what I did was I, in my head, I came up with, okay, who are the three to four biggest R&B trap soul artists out right now, right? And at that time, it was Bryson, Party, uh, and Summer Walker was just starting to pop off around that time too, right? So I was like, okay, let me focus on Bryson because I feel like I can, you know, capture his sound better. Mm -hmm. So you can see from my channel, if you go on my channel, from 2019 all the way till now, every single beat I have has Bryson in the title. Right. That was me. That was, that was like my chicken sandwich was Bryson, you know? Mm -hmm. So I focused on that. And that's when I really started building a fan base and a following. Cause everyone, cause you know, if you go on YouTube, everyone's like, Oh, yo, no one can do traps with like Benji, blah, blah, blah. Right. And it starts to gain traffic. And the thing with YouTube is once your channel starts to pick up momentum and traffic, they actually start to promote you more because you're actually bringing in more revenue to the actual exactly. site. Right. So obviously it's a slow start, but once you get the ball rolling, you have to keep that momentum. And that's when you're going to start showing up on suggested pages, the home pages, all of that. Right. So I was doing that until like what I would say around June, July, 2019. And, you know, I got lucky and I got rewarded for, you know, sticking to that one keyword. And then I had one beat is called beautiful mess. Right. That was the one that had 1.8 million views on YouTube. That one, actually, if you go look at the analytics, it showed up on every single search even if you search type beat back around that time just type beat it popped up on just type beat it, i think it was like number four right so that was kind of the turning point for my whole channel